Hey guys, Will from EDM Tips. Today we're going to look at mastering. We want to get our track sounding really fat and in your face. So I'm going to walk through how I mastered this track to take it from this to this. Now these techniques will work for any genre of music. I'm working on a house track, but even if you're working on a rock track, the fundamentals remain the same. There are a few things that I'd like to say first. One, you're going to get the most out of this video if you've got a decent pair of studio monitors or headphones, so you can hear these small differences I'm making in the track. Two, the mix that you are working with should already be as good as you can possibly get it. There is no substitute for a good mix down before starting the mastering process. So if you want to find out how to make better mixes for your music, you can download my free 30 mixing tips PDF below this vid. Three, although I'm going to show you exactly the process I used to master this track, every single track that you master will require slightly different treatment, but the chain and the process will be quite similar. Firstly, what is mastering? It's simply polishing a track to get it ready for release on all sorts of different streaming services or CD or vinyl. And we do that by applying certain effects to a mix down file, which we've already exported to a single stereo file that we can then take into the mastering stage. Now what I'm going to show you will work in any door. I'm going to be using Ableton Live, which frankly isn't the best software for mastering in. Uh, something like Logic or Pro Tools would probably be easier to see and compare the different levels for what I'm going to show you. But the end results can be just as good in any door. This isn't going to be a polished video, it's just bosh 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 what I've done. I hope you enjoy it, so let's jump into Ableton and let's get it done. Okay, so first I am going to load in the mix track, which is the mix down file, stereo WAV, high quality as possible, 24 bit, etc, etc. And then let's walk through what's going on in this mastering. So first things first is check out what levels are going on. So I've got this meter here called the Vumped meter by Klangel. It costs about $20, but you can get free versions um, of other meters. And then choose a VU meter. And make sure that it's bumping around zero when you've got it calibrated to minus 18 decibels. Great, now we load in our comparison track, which is basically a tune in a similar genre. Uh, let's listen, I'm, I think this is a dusky track, Square Miso. And obviously it sounds a lot louder and beefier than our pre-master track, because it's already been mastered. So what we do for that is bring down the level of the ghost track to be the equivalent of our pre-master track. So let's open up Vumps on there, choose VU meter, and get to a loud bit. See, we can see it's right up here when we've got that VU meter on there. So we just put a gain plug in before the meter until we've got it bumping around zero, roughly. So now, both tracks are at a similar level when we're listening to them. Okay, so the next thing to do is to check out the frequency spread. So this, this uh, metering kind of covers off the loudness aspect. But let's look at the frequency spread. So this is our ghost track. But we start it from the busiest part. And I always loop the busiest part of the track we're mastering, as in the, the bit that's got the most going on. So we can make sure the levels sound good there and the frequency. And then it generally works throughout the rest of the track. So if you do an eight bar loop, four or eight bar loop on the busiest part. Um, yeah, so about there. Okay, so this is the frequency spread of our ghost track. So we've got a nice bass, it's dipped out here in the middle a bit, lots of high end and then it rolls right off at the high end. Let's compare that to our pre-master track at the moment. So actually they're quite similar. We can see there's a bit more high end here in our track. 
where it rolls off completely to silent at 20 kilohertz on the ghost track. So we want to kind of match our track to this, um, more or less. Obviously they're different tracks, so it's not going to be exact, um, because each has different instruments and whatnot. Okay, so the first in our mastering chain is EQ, and this is reductive EQ, so we're going to get rid of the frequencies that are just cluttering up the headroom, which is going to affect how loud we can get the mix ultimately. So let's see what I've done here. So I have got this Brainworks equalizer, which allows you to equalize the center channel and the stereo channel separately. And generally you want everything below about 130 hertz to be mono, um, so it doesn't mess up any club systems, you don't get phase cancellation. Um, and th the reason it used to be is when you get something pressed to vinyl, if there are stereo bass frequencies, it would make the uh, needle move quite a lot and sometimes it could actually fly out the groove and then you, uh, you have no more music. Um, so yeah, what I've done here is just rolled off the bass. Let's just solo the side channels. I have to listen to our track. So there was not much going on there anyway. But just to make sure, I've rolled off everything. Quite a gentle roll, under about 250 hertz, so there's no mono, so there's no stereo bass, sorry, under that frequency. Okay, so the next part of our chain is a bit more EQ, and I'm using the Oxford equalizers here, and this is to sweeten the sound. So what we're going to do is roll off all the bass frequencies below about 30 hertz um, because we just don't need them. So that's going to be cluttering up our headroom. It's pretty much inaudible. So it's just wasted frequency. And then we've just sweetened up that high end. This is off. It's very subtle, these changes, because it was a well-mixed track anyway. Um, but we've just added some brightness right up at the high end. Um, where, are we, where have we got that shelf? Um, about Starting at about 1200 hertz. Or 12 kilohertz, should I say. 12,000 hertz. Um, then the next Oxford EQ, I'm literally just doing a real hard... Um, low pass filter at the very top of the spectrum and the reason I'm doing that is if we look at our span here, our spectrum analyzer and we look at our comparison track you can see it drops right off there so that's what we're going to go for as well so we've got a real hard slope and we can see it's now cut away there Now you can actually boost the low end a bit if you're lacking there, but as I've said before, each track is different and they need different treatment, but this is the general order in which you do things. Now the utility here is just to notch down the volume again because we increased the volume slightly when we were doing this additive EQ, because, um, and we want our track to remain bouncing around the zero level. very little difference but if you've got quite um, big frequency boosts then it's going to obviously increase the volume of your track so you want to bring it back down so when you bypass your equalization you're actually hearing what's really going on rather than being distracted by the volume gain okay next is a bit of parallel compression this is where stuff starts getting loud Okay, so we have got our dry track here. And what we have done is basically just duplicate that using the audio effect rack in Ableton, but you can do it in any other door in a different way. And then the other channel, got a really hard compressor. Let's pump it up so you can hear. So it's a quite extreme compression. And the reason we do that is so we can keep the transients of the dry track 
and then just bring in these this compressed version of the track too. Just gives it a bit more energy. Okay, next stage, I've done a bit more EQ there just to take off the low end, the very end of the low end um, after the compressor because the compressed bass takes up more headroom than the compressed mid and higher frequencies. Next stage, we are going to add some stereo width. So if we listen to the comparison track, we can hear it's nice and wide. And what we can do, this is free, this Ozone Imager. You can get it from their website, Isotope Ozone. And we can use it just to add a bit of width to our track. So this is with it off. So you can see this is kind of buzzing around in the middle on this spectrum analyzer or on this polar analyzer. But then when we've added some width, it spreads it out a bit more so we can fill out this frequency rate, uh, this stereo field. Okay, next is a bit of control over that stereo field. So as you recall a few minutes ago, I said you don't want any bass below about 130 hertz being stereo. So after this stereo widener here, because it's only on the whole track rather than a multiband stereo um, enhancer, which you can get, I've now used this mono maker and selected 130 hertz and everything below that is mono. So if I pump this up, you can hear it all goes to mono. So everything under the, under 22 kilohertz is mono, which is everything. So just bring it down to about 130 hertz, just to keep that mono in the center channel. You can add a bit more stereo width there if you like, but we don't need to. Okay, and after we've done the so basically, we've done gain staging, we've done equalization, reductive EQ, we've then done additive EQ, we then added some compression if needs be, then we've attacked the stereo field and made it wider, and now the last step in the mastering chain is making it louder. So if we now turn off the reduction we did on the comparison track, let's change the kind of metering and this is why I use Vumped because you can change the metering and use K12 which is a root mean squared type way of um, measuring how loud it sounds rather than the peak volume it's the average volume over a, a certain amount of time so here we can see that our comparison track is I think that's peak there uh, it's peaking about 8 and here we've got 12. So we just want our track to match that. Or as close as damn it. And then it's going to sound as loud. So let's try that. First, let's open up the Vumped so we can compare. We don't need the VU anymore. Thank you very much for your help. Change it to K12. And then we can use, I'm using the Oxford limiter because I absolutely love them, but there are loads of limiters you can use. So all I've done there, just put the values on the meter, it just brought up the input gain and obviously a limiter is a very hard compressor so it's not going to let anything go above that, above the zero or what we set here which is just below zero. And then I've added another limiter. Um, in the chain because I find just adding an extra one just brings it up a tiny bit more so let's compare it without that last limiter on it just squeezes out that extra bit of volume and you see I haven't touched the input gain haven't touched the output level or the enhanced knob which is a kind of uh, harmonic exciter if you will and that is that. So now let's compare them. Okay, well, meter-wise, that looks good. 
Yeah, comparable to our comparison track. Frequency wise, that's our comparison track. Let's see ours. This is our track's frequency spread. This is the comparison track frequency spread. So you can see, pretty close. And that is how I mastered this particular track. And that sequence of processing, so gain staging, reductive EQ, additive EQ, then compression, although I might do compression before the additive EQ, then a bit of parallel compression, make it wider with some stereo spread, and only then do we bump up the volume to try and match what we have with our comparison track. Now I know that's not particularly in depth, I wanted it to be quick so you could see how I did it. This isn't an in-depth course. If you want to find out about more of my in-depth courses, you can of course check out edmtips.com. But in the meantime, as I said, I hope this has helped. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. I hope you enjoyed watching this vid guys. As I said, it's not a super in-depth video. I haven't covered off all the different techniques you can use in mastering, but this should have given you some good ideas about how you can make your mixes sound really fat like the ones that you hear on Beatport and Spotify. Let me know in the comments below if you've got any questions and I will get back to you as soon as I can. Thanks for subscribing and I'll see you next time. Make you drop it to the floor, make you rock it to the